Hi, it's Sue. Thanks for joining me for today's Bible reading. I am reading for March 18th, Judges 1 and 2. So brand new book, two chapters. And there are, looks like eight separate days of reading for this book of Judges. Verse 1. After the death of Joshua, the children of Israel asked Yahweh, saying, Who should go up for us first against the Canaanites to fight against them? Yahweh said, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have delivered the land into his hand. Judah said to Simeon, his brother, come up with me into my lot that we may fight against the Canaanites, and I likewise will go with you into your lot. So Simeon went with him. Judah went up, and Yahweh delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hand. They struck 10,000 men in Bezek. They found Adonai Bezek in Bezek, and they fought against him. They struck the Canaanites and the Perizzites, but Adonai Bezek fled. They pursued him, caught him, and cut off his thumbs and big toes. Adonai Bezek said, Seventy kings have their thumbs and their big toes cut off, scavenged under my table. As I have done, so God has done unto me. They brought him to Jerusalem, and he died there. The children of Judah fought against Jerusalem, took it, struck it with the edge of the sword, and set the city on fire. After that, the children of Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites who live in the hill country and in the south and in the lowland. Judah went against the Canaanites who lived in Hebron. The name of Hebron, 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 before that was Kiriath Arba. They struck Sheshay, Ahimon, and Talmai. From there, he went against the inhabitants of Debir. The name Debir before that was Kiriath Sefer. Caleb said, I will give Aksa, my daughter, as a wife to the man who strikes Kiriath Sefer and takes it. Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, took it. So he gave him Aksa, his daughter, to, as his wife. When she came, she got him to ask her father for a field. She dismounted from off of her donkey, and Caleb said to her, What would you like? She said to him, Give me a blessing, because you have set me in the land of the south. Give me also the springs of water. Then Caleb gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. The children of Kenite, Moses' brother-in-law, went up out of the city of palm trees, with the children of Judah into the wilderness of Judah, which is in the south of Arad, and they went and lived with the people. I think I would ask for the springs too. I love those things. I love fresh springs and fresh spring waterfalls and, you know, rock bottom creeks. I just love it. Um, verse 17 Judah went with Simeon, his brother, and they struck the Canaanites who inhabited in Zephath and utterly destroyed it. The name of the city was called Hormah. Also, Judah took Gaza with its border, and Ashkelon with its border, and Ekron with its border. Yahweh was with Judah and drove out the inhabitants of the hill country, for he could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley, because they had chariots of iron. They gave Hebron to Caleb, as Moses had said, and he drove three sons of Anak out of there. The children of Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites who inhabited Jerusalem, but the Jebusites dwell in the, with the children of Benjamin, excuse me, in Jerusalem to this day. The house of Joseph also went up against Bethel and Yahweh was with them. The house of Joseph sent to spy out Bethel or Bethel. The name of the city before that was Luz. The watchers saw a man come out of the city and they said to him, please show us the entrance to the city and we will deal kindly with you. He showed them the entrance of the city and they struck the city with the edge of the sword, but they let the man and his family go. The man went into the land of the Hittites, built a city, and called its name Luz, which is the, its name to this day. Manasseh did not drive out the inhabitants of Beshion and its towns, nor Tanakh and its towns, nor the inhabitants of Dor and its towns, nor the inhabitants of Iblim and its towns, nor the inhabitants of Megiddo and its towns, but the Canaanites would dwell in that land. Now, I think it's interesting because some of them they killed, but some of them it says they drove them out. And there are scholars who believe when they were driven out of Canaan, they made their way into various parts of the world, including all the way here to the Americas. And they have archaeological um, proof of that or archaeological finds that seem to support their theory. Um, they have found not only giant skeletons, but they have found relics that are from this Levant region. And they don't really understand why they're here. They've found some with Hebrew writing so it's a pretty interesting history where did they all go when they drove out so back to so they let the man and his family go 
Verse 26, the man went into the land of the Hittites, built a city. I already read that. 27, Manasseh did not drive out the inhabitants of Beshion and its towns. Wow, I read way back there. Let me go down a little further. Sorry. Uh, verse 28, when Israel had grown strong, they put Canaanites to forced labor and did not utterly drive them out. Ephraim didn't drive out the Canaanites who lived in Gezer, but the Canaanites lived in Gezer among them. Zebulun didn't drive out the inhabitants of Kitron, nor the inhabitants of Nahalol, but the Canaanites lived among them and became subject to forced labor. Asher didn't drive out the inhabitants of Aiko, didn't drive out, uh, nor the inhabitants of Sidon, nor of Ahlab, ah nor Akzib, nor Helbath, nor Afik, nor Rehob, but the Asherites lived among the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land, for they did not drive them out. Naphtali didn't drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh, nor the inhabitants of Beth Anath, but he lived among the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land. Nevertheless, the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh and Beth Anath became subject to forced labor. The Amorites forced the children of Dan into the hill country, for they would <clears throat> excuse me, not allow them to come down to the valley. But the Amorites would dwell in Mount Hires, in Aijalon, and in Shalbim, Yet the hand of the house of Joseph prevailed so that they became subject to forced labor. The border of the Amorites was from the ascent of Akrabim from the rock and upward. Chapter two. And I'm glad it's only two chapters today when they start getting into all this repetitive names. <laughs> so, you know, from if you've been reading with me in, in the book of Joshua, sometimes they had four chapters of this stuff. All right. Chapter two, verse one. Yahweh's angel came up from Gilgal to Bakim. He said, "Was well, Yahweh's angel? Yahweh's angel came up from Gilgal to Bakim and said, I brought you out of Egypt and have brought you to the land which I swore to give your fathers. I said, I will never break my covenant with you. You shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land. You shall break down their altars, but you have not listened to my voice. Why have you done this? Therefore, I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be in your sides and their gods will be a snare to you. When Yahweh's angel spoke these words to the children of Israel, the people lifted up their voice and wept. Who is this angel, Yahweh's angel, or angel of the Lord, I believe it says in other ver uh, versions. So the people lifted up their voice and wept. Where is it? Verse five. They called the name of that place Bokim, and they sacrificed there to Yahweh. Now when Joshua had sent the people away, the children of Israel each went to his inheritance to possess the land. The people served Yahweh all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great work of Yahweh that he had worked for Israel. Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Yahweh, died, being 110 years old. They buried him in the border of his inheritance in timnath Perez, in the hill country of Ephraim, on the north of the mountain of Gash. After all that generation were gathered to their fathers, another generation arose after them who didn't know Yahweh nor the work which he had done for Israel. Sounds like America, doesn't it? The children of Israel did that which was evil in Yahweh's sight and served the Baals. They abandoned Yahweh, the God of their fathers, who brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods of the gods of the people who were around them and bowed themselves down to them and provoked Yahweh to anger. They abandoned Yahweh and served Baal and the Ashtoreth. Yahweh's anger burned against Israel and he delivered them into the hands of raiders who plundered them. He sold them into the hands of their enemies all around so that they could no longer stand before their enemies. Wherever they went, Yahweh's hand was against them for evil, as Yahweh had spoken and as Yahweh had sworn to them, and they were very distressed. Yahweh raised up judges who saved them out of the land of those who plundered them. Yet they didn't listen to their judges, for they prostituted themselves to other gods and bowed themselves down to them. They turned aside quickly out of the way in which their fathers walked, obeying Yahweh's commandments. They didn't do they didn't do so. When Yahweh raised up judges for them, then Yahweh was with the judge and saved them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge, for it grieved Yahweh because of their groaning by reason of those who oppressed them and troubled them. But when the judge was dead, they turned back and dealt more corruptly than their fathers in the following in following other gods to serve them and to bow down to them. They didn't cease what they were doing or give up their stubborn ways. Yahweh's anger burned against Israel, and he said, Because this nation transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers, and has not listened to my voice, 
I will no longer drive out any of the nations that Joshua left when he died from before them, that they that by them I may test Israel to see if they will keep Yahweh's way to walk therein as their fathers kept it or not. So Yahweh left the nations without driving them left the nations without driving them out hastily. He didn't deliver them into Joshua's hand. That's the end of today's reading. Thanks for joining me. God bless you. Till tomorrow.